And now please allow me to um, say a few words to our graduates. Class of 2023, you are simply amazing. Yes, you are amazing and remarkable, and I wish I had more words. Some of you may be thinking, he says that every year to every class. And yes, <laughs> graduating from the best medical school in the world is extraordinary in any year. But there is something truly different about you, as Dr. Fauci mentioned. You figured out how to accomplish your goals in the midst of a three-year crisis filled with chaos and fear. COVID did not stand in your way. For most of you, medical school had just started, eight months, nine months, and then the world was turned upside down. All of a sudden, your classes went virtual. The anxiety, the panic that permeated everything we did in those first months of the pandemic. You will always remember how isolated we all felt, worried about getting COVID, worried about transmitting it to our patients or to each other, and then to be in quarantine as some of us were. But somehow you managed to adapt to the enormous curveballs and you found a way to thrive. Time and again, I and the, our education team have seen you figure out how to achieve your goals under what I would call the harshest and most hostile conditions we have experienced as a generation. And because of this, you are more prepared and better equipped than any graduating class to date. Why do I say that? And why is that so important and relevant? I say that because you are now entering the profession of the physician in a world that is possibly as harsh and certainly not ideal for what we do. It is a world posing all sorts of threats to medicine, medical science, and the very paradigm that has distinguished the physician in society in the past. What do I mean when I say paradigm of the physician? I mean the way society used to think of doctors. The doctor as expert, as all-knowing, the paragon of judgment, the trusted. The superhero doctors of TV shows that were way before your time. All the faculty up here know Ben Casey and Dr. Kildare and Marcus Welby, MD. I don't mean Meredith Gray or McDreamy. But perhaps the best example in modern times is Dr. Anthony Fauci, sitting right here behind me, who exemplifies all of those values in a physician. Today, we live in a time in which the opinion and expertise of the doctor is often weighed equally with information gathered on the internet, if it is weighed at all. Mistrust of doctors and medicine is widespread and the subject of popular conspiracy theorists. A rumor promulgated by media and public, public figures led to the use of unproven drugs in COVID, like hydrochloroquine, hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin, instead of vaccines that have been subjected to clinical trials for efficacy and safety. Let's be honest. These were not merely expressions of mistrust. They were outright rejections of the way we use science to determine the best medical care. Several weeks ago, a Texas judge suspended the FDA's approval of a drug, mifepristone. The argument that was made was that it had been approved 20 years ago, and believe it or not, that approval was modified several times since then by expert panels of the FDA. But the explanation was this was all because of pressure tactics it was not even relevant that over that 20-year period, efficacy and safety was apparent in no less than 5 million women. And yes, who will ever forget what was implied 
by the questions asked of Dr. Fauci by congressional leaders. In much of America, we are being told by government officials what we can't do in the clinical care of women and children based on cherry picking of theories that fit into a particular worldview while characterizing the judgment of physicians and physician organizations as physicians on one side of a political spectrum, as if the standards practiced by physicians are driven by ulterior motives. And of course, what are those ulterior motives? Take your pick between money, power, and authority. So what are we to do? Or maybe I should say that another way. What are you going to do? Throw up your hands? There's nothing I can do as an individual physician about societal trends, partisan movements. No, today we give you one last teaching lesson at Washington University School of Medicine, and that lesson is about the two things that must be your North Stars. And you heard about that from Dr. Fauci science and compassion. Let's start with science. You are entering the medical profession at a time when opportunities from technological advances are beyond anything that any of us up here ever imagined. When the potential for scientific discovery in curing diseases is greater than it's ever been. We have had an impact on diseases that we never thought would be possible. A few weeks ago, a silencing RNA therapeutic was approved because it produced motor improvements in some patients with Lou Gehrig's disease. The messenger RNA platform that was used to make the vaccines for COVID can now be used to develop new cancer therapeutics. We have technology to alter genes and reprogram cells. None of that progress would have been made possible without science and medicine pursued at the highest levels at academic medical centers like this one, where we push ourselves and test our hypotheses in the most rigorous ways. These advances can only come from a culture unwilling to accept unproven treatments, a community in which we generate evidence and we follow it to wherever the science leads. And so when it comes to treating your patients, all of your judgments must be based in the very latest and most rigorously tested science. And when the science is lacking, which is all too often the case, you must search for the best expertise and look to your colleagues who have dedicated themselves to careers in research. Talk to the people who are doing the work and make sure your decisions are taking into account the most up-to-date scientific developments. What about the second North Star, compassion? As Dr. Fauci said, quote, you and your humanity are keys to optimal patient care. Just as critical as scientific innovation to patient care is your humanity, your ability to look patients in the eye with compassion and understanding your ability to explain a diagnosis and treatment plan to a fellow human being sitting in front of you. To be a graduate of this medical school is to understand what goes into diagnosing an illness and how best to treat it. And to be a graduate of this medical school is all to, to understand that you have a responsibility and obligation to help your patients understand the science and the evidence and you must see them as more than just a problem to be solved. They must know that you will search exhaustively for every possible approach to their condition, that you will listen carefully to them, to their concerns and their doubts, and why maybe your plan isn't going to work for them as an individual. The idea that you are right because you are the doctor is completely unacceptable. Because I'm the doctor is not going to be part of your lexicon. Yes, you are leaving here today as a doctor, but that title means nothing if you cannot successfully guide your patients with expertise and compassion towards better health. If you can demonstrate the value of your expertise and explain what you are doing, you build a relationship that is based on trust 
rather than authority. And those relationships you build can have a ripple effect because each patient you will see is a potential ambassador for medicine and science. If they feel good about the care they receive, if they feel heard and understand, understood, if they see that you are genuine in your motives, it will change the way they talk about doctors and medicine in their families and their communities, one patient at a time, one family after the next. So what I am saying is that you will fight back against the mistrust and the alternate agendas by drawing on all those things that you have learned here in this place during the storm of COVID, not just looking at the science, the evidence, and not just the relentless pursuit of improvement, but also the ability to extend understanding and compassion to every single patient. It will not be easy. Sometimes I think about the challenges facing medicine and medical science, and I feel apprehensive about our ability to reverse those troubling trends. But then I look at all of you. You have completed this first stage of your medical training under conditions none of us could ever have imagined. And you have not only th survived, but you have thrived and you are ready. You have been able to meet each challenge with strength and optimism, and perhaps most importantly, compassion for everyone around you, your families, your classmates, your patients. You are ready to take on this task and be the doctors and scientists we will need in the coming years. A day like today, looking out onto all of your faces and the people who have supported you along the way makes me feel boundless hope for the future. Looking at all of you and knowing what you will do with your lives one by one is the ultimate validation of everything that we do at WashU Medicine. You are that validation. Congratulations, class of 2023, on all your accomplishments and all the growth yet to come. <laughs>